If you ever see me in real life, this is what I'm wearing. Good morning vlog. Day five is crazy. My lips are burning. They're so dry. Not the mystery man texting me. I'm putting this away. I got on Instagram today and I asked you guys to just send me some questions. While I answer the questions, I am going to be doing a little makeup look for you guys. This is usually the makeup that I like to wear when I have my hair pinned straight like this. I do think I'm going to be doing a big bouncy blowout tomorrow because this hair will not survive Florida this weekend. Also, I'm in my glam room right now. I want to do so much more with this room. Like, I feel like this background is so boring. I want this room to be like my childhood fantasy. I want Hannah Montana dream closet in this room. That might be my Christmas gift to myself this year is redoing this room. Also, before we get into it, all of the makeup products that I'm using today are going to be linked for you guys below. Obviously, since I'm gonna be yapping, it might be kind of hard for me to explain every single step. Let's go ahead and get into the q and A. I I wanna start with some juicy questions. I haven't even gone through these yet. Like, what if it's just a bunch of creepy uncles commenting bobs? Can I take you on a date? Send money. And I'm like, I just, I just wanna give you my lip combo. Like, please. If you wanna go on a date with me, devil face, eggplant emoji. Somebody said, do you believe in hookup culture? Okay, I see, I see where we're starting out. What you choose to do with your body and how you express your sexuality is completely up to you. I don't think that there's a right or a wrong way to have a relationship with sex. I have slightly traditional values because I grew up in an Indian family. So, you know, I wasn't allowed to date until I married. To this day, I will not watch people kissing on TV in front of my parents because it makes me so uncomfortable. Having a super, super relaxed hookup culture where people really lack strong committed relationships to one another is one end of the spectrum and that's horrible and then the other end of the spectrum which is like romance and sex and dating just makes you super uncomfortable so to answer your question i don't think that there's a right or wrong way to live your life who am i to like come up with the rule book on that your job is to figure it out for yourself not for everybody else and then find people that are like-minded if you want to hook up with someone every weekend you go do that girl my social life is kind of toxic because it doesn't exist like i don't go anywhere unless it has to do with like me eating healthy working on myself if i was looking to people who i knew didn't share my values or weren't in the same place as me in life right now and then i was expecting them to give me the type of relationship i'm looking for like so much of self-worth is knowing who is worthy of your time and i'm not saying that in like a judgmental way because honestly you guys i am like if you know me personally you know i have wasted my time with the biggest bums on planet earth all of the things that i'm saying are things that i have really learned the hard way was that the longest way i could have possibly answered the question also i just dropped something and picked it up with my foot i'm not going to show my feet on here for obvious reasons but someone said give real raw advice to someone who wants to pursue a dream but isn't sure how to start the first step in achieving your dreams is truly believing that your dream can come true i don't mean that in a cliche way i mean you need to be able to see yourself living that dream and then every single day you need to think to yourself okay is this action taking me closer to achieving this dream did i do something today that is contributing to my dream and my endeavor so if there's a little piece of your routine where you can incorporate time to literally daydream and visualize and jot down ideas about your dream and all of the avenues you can take to get there do that for me it's like when i'm on a treadmill or when i'm on a stairmaster i am literally like just i'm listening to frequencies and i'm just thinking about all the stuff i want to do maybe i'll have my notes app open and i'll add some stuff to my list on you know whatever i want to achieve but actually actively dedicating time to believing in your dream and not making it so like even the word dream sounds like out of reach like this is something i could achieve these aren't dreams, these are goals. People achieve goals every single day. There's a system, there is a way that you can achieve your goals. If you ask any entrepreneur, I'm telling you nine times out of 10, their biggest regret, they're gonna tell you, it was 
not starting 10 years earlier. Even if right now you're not in the financial position to achieve your dreams or whatever, you feel like there's something standing between you and your dream, you have got to start to close that gap somehow. If the problem is money, okay, well then our goal for right now is a mini goal to achieve the big goal and that's going to be saving $500 a month. You know what I mean? You've got to break it up. You've got to have an action plan. You've got to have a strategy and then you've got to fine tune your mechanisms. Start actually actively implementing a strategy. There's people with so much less doing so much more than you simply because they have the discipline and they're starting. I've always felt like ideas just visit us. If you don't grab an idea while it's flying towards you and if you miss it, that idea is just gonna go fall in someone else's lap and guess what, they're gonna execute it. So it's not about comparison, it's just you have to be able to rely on yourself, you have to be able to trust your own capability and you've gotta, you've gotta believe in yourself enough to just go ahead and start doing the things that make you feel like there's a fire lit under you. Like that's the entire point of life. There's literally no other point than to be here, have a good time and to make sure the people that we love are also having a good time. I mean, if you have a dream, if you have been pointed in the correct direction of something that makes you feel passionate, you have to listen to that because do you know how many people are out here that cannot figure out what their dream is? There's so many people out here that don't even have the ability to have a dream because they're out here working on Maslow's basic pyramid of needs. Like they're worrying about their food, their water, their next meal, their basic needs. So if you are able to like actually have a dream and you should take advantage of that, like do not do yourself a disservice and live your life in regret later down the road. Like, do I need to give a TED talk? I'm I'm shocked, I'm confused. Okay, next question, this is kind of on the same theme. Do you have any advice on how to begin a successful YouTube channel and gain the right audience? I have posted maybe 10 videos this year max and now all of a sudden i'm doing vlogmas and i'm like i'm actually posting a video every single day and that for me is a summary of how i would answer this question filming posting and editing for me is so much harder than it should be it is a passion of mine but it is something that is challenging for me and i think particularly with youtube it is such a rewarding platform but at the same time, this platform requires a lot of work and a lot of patience. On YouTube, you're not getting TikTok views. You're not getting Instagram real views, okay? Off the top, like I, the reason that I love YouTube so much and I respect YouTubers so much is this is a full-time job. It requires so much discipline. It requires such a good understanding of business branding and also knowing what your audience wants is very important on youtube and it's it's genuinely it's not for the week so i would say if you're interested in starting a youtube channel you need to throw shit at the wall and see what sticks get over yourself and don't just like post a perfect video i know that there are creators that do that and they just are so talented and amazing and they're like patrick bateman they just post the most perfect videos and nothing else but i'm telling you if if you're not just like naturally a cinematographer you have got to get into the habit of documenting your life speaking to the camera i mean those habits need to be coming to you like breathing so i would say the best way to start a youtube channel is literally document everything play with a bunch of different niches like do a food video one day do a sit down video like this one day try vlogging see what you enjoy doing and see what your audience enjoys doing and then take those little learnings and apply them to the next video and i'm saying all this i'm giving all this advice right now does that mean i follow it no i could definitely do better but if i were talking to like my best friend or my child and they were asking me these questions these are the answers that i would be giving Ooh, this is a juicy question do you have any fillers or work done? I actually talked about this quite a few times. Um, it's not that I don't believe in getting work done and like fixing insecurities that we have about ourselves. But for me personally, I grew up hating my face, hating my features, hating so much about myself for so, so long. I'm still insecure about certain things. However, the thing that has kept me from getting any work done, even lip filler, even the smallest facial balancing, the reason I haven't done any of that is because I know that for me, 
I would feel like a fraud and that would then make me want to get more done. I have a very, very addictive personality type. That's why I don't partake in a lot of activities that people my age do. It's not because I think they're wrong. It's not because I'm on a high horse. I know myself and I know what's healthy for me and what's unhealthy for me. I also feel an extra added responsibility because of what I do for work. I know how much it means to me when I see an actress or a model or someone really beautiful and famous that doesn't have work done, particularly if they are ethnically beautiful. If less people got nose jobs, less people would feel like they needed a nose job. You know what I mean? And for me, actually having an ethnic nose, that means a lot. Like if I go and get my nose done, what is the message that I'm giving to you guys? My nose isn't good enough. We should be changing to conform and fit the beauty standard. No, like I have done some really cool shit with the face that my parents and God gave me. I'm sticking to it. You know, maybe I'll get a little Botox when I'm 50 or 40, who knows? But I don't wanna change the construction of my face because A, I have better things I wanna put my money into. No one's paying these bills, girl, it's just me. And B, I don't hate myself anymore. What's your Venus sign? I have a Venus in Cancer. If you are an astrology girly, please tell me what that means because I don't really know. I know that you're supposed to like dress, uh, at least this is what TikTok told me, that you're supposed to dress according to your Venus sign, but I don't know you guys, I really don't know. Someone said, congrats on buying your first house. Why did you decide to do that and why is it in North Carolina? That is actually kind of a hilarious question. I am a Southern girl, okay? I, I was born in Georgia, I went to college in Georgia, and I grew up in North Carolina, not too far from here, actually. So when I was 22 and I decided to move to California and pursue something creative, I learned a couple of lessons. The first thing was, in this day and age, you don't have to live in LA to become a creator or to do something creative. We live in such a unique time. You can really make your dreams come true from anywhere. You can make a lot of your dreams come through with this little box. So um, I had that realization about six months into living in California when I had the rude awakening that I was over this shit. I was over the red carpets already. I never flinched when I met a celebrity or a celebrity walked in there. I don't care. Why would I care? LA lost its glitz and glamour for me really early. I had the opposite experience of a lot of people who moved to LA, which is I went to LA and I found myself. I found out that I am the type of person who enjoys slow mornings. I enjoy gardening. I enjoy a farmer's market. You can do all those things in California. It just requires a lot more money. A couple of years ago, I could not even think about buying a house, okay? I was buying food from the Dollar Tree. So I didn't know how I was going to make it happen. I just knew I had to make it happen. Once I figured out that I did want to be a homeowner, that I did want that slower life, that led me to a couple of conclusions. One of them was I would love to have a home to myself. I would love to have designated areas where I can film, buy healthy groceries all the time. And I also missed my family so much. Even when I was in college and everything, like, yeah, I missed my parents a lot and I would talk to them on the phone every day and stuff, but it wasn't to the point where I was like, I need to move back. The longer I spent in LA, the more I realized like, I don't feel settled here. I don't feel at home here. I'm not making a big friend group that's replacing that void that I feel for family. And then every time I would come home to visit for the holidays or whatever, I would be extending my trip and extending my trip and I'd be like, life would be so good if I could just, you know, go to yoga with my mom and come downstairs and see my parents every day. I think my goals became really clear to me and I started working really, really hard. I found an amazing, amazing team to put some roots down and just start enjoying and living life where I could be near my family, travel to LA for work stuff and just kind of enjoy the best of both worlds. I know in yesterday's video, I showed you guys my lip combo and I forgot what it was called. The color was 36 Peach Honey Bee from the brand Romand. If you're wondering, now you know. This is why you have to watch all the Vlogmas videos because 
I'm not responsible and I didn't put anything in my description boxes when I was posting at midnight yesterday. So if you ever wanted to find a lip color, you needed to come here and watch this. Three words to describe my ideal partner. Respectful, responsible, and solution oriented. Is that a good one? No, but now I feel like it's gonna be like some boring banker. Guys, I don't, I don't think about men like long enough to manifest my dreams. And that's why I, I'm afraid. I fear that there's a really strong possibility that I end up never being with anyone. Yes, I am like kind of talking to someone right now. Like if you guys watched Vlogmas Day 1, I kind of spilled the tea on that. But I'm a big believer in not really talking about my love life until I have a ring on my finger. And so, you know, all intents and purposes... I just, I just think, I think that I love cats and I'm pretty self-sufficient, so I'm not pressed either way. I saw this TikTok the other day and it was like, if you ever come up to me and tell me I look like a clean girl, I'm offended. Like, I want people to look at me and think I'm a doll and think I'm a Barbie doll. And I get a lot of negative comments on my videos where I'm putting on makeup before I go to the gym, which, by the way, when I put on makeup to go to the gym, it's like one or two dots of a tinted moisturizer on my cheeks because I have hyperpigmentation and dark spots because I've been breaking out so bad and then I put a lip combo on and underneath that I'm literally wearing like Korean skincare so I don't know people are so pressed about it it is what it is but um what what I just like went on a tangent I went on a tangent and I forgot what I was even talking about and I feel like it was important and now I forgot I don't even know what I was talking about Oh yeah, the Barbie doll thing. Yeah, I feel like once you figure out how to do your makeup, it's not even so much about you need to wear makeup. It's like, let me do this little thing to add like some sparkle to my look. When I was younger, I don't even remember who said this to me. It might have been my mom. But then again, like my family is one of those families that we don't have like rules. Like we all dress however we want to dress. Like we, we are like a pajamas through the weekend family. But somebody told me when I was younger... You always have to look presentable because you never know who you're going to run into. And literally the next week, like I'm not even kidding, the next week I was in the airport like looking sickening and the most attractive person, like it was a joke. He literally, I don't know who this was, this is just some random stranger, literally the hottest guy I've ever seen in my life. He looked like Aaron Taylor Johnson, but like my age at the time, which was probably like 13, so he probably looked nothing like Aaron Taylor Johnson. I was at the airport, this guy walks by, I'm literally sitting there looking like a rat, wishing that I had like brushed my hair or something. And from that day forward, I was like, I don't care where I'm going. Like I might wear a really chill, loose outfit, but then the hair and makeup are gonna be eating. You know what I mean? It's not so much about like, you never know who you're gonna meet. That for me turned into like a personal confidence thing. I just wanna look presentable. Like if I have the time to get ready and I have the energy to get ready, I'm gonna do that. Wait y'all, I actually like this makeup so much. Is this my new everyday makeup? It's so much more than usual. Oh, this makeup is actually really, really good. Sorry I only answered like two of y'all's questions. If you have more questions for me, let me know. Cause I need a break. Like, I'm sorry, Vlogmas is really fun. I love it, but I'm going out of town this weekend. So I've been trying to, I have to film so many videos before Saturday, it's Thursday. So Thursday, between today and tomorrow, I have to somehow get like five videos done. So these little sit down chatty like get ready with me's y'all might be getting a couple more of these because this is like a good breather for me. <laughs> the vlogs will be back when I get back from my trip but I have some other fun concepts planned. We're going to switch it up a little bit for the next couple days of vlogmas but I hope that you guys are still enjoying this series. Thank you for sitting with me and listening to me yap. Try this makeup out. Like I said, again, the products are going to be linked below. And if you don't follow me on Instagram or anywhere, I would love if you did. Just like join my little family. I love you so much. I hope you try out this look and I will see you next time.